Hey guys, welcome back to Johnny Nomad Presents. And today I have a special guest, a cat I grew up with um, from Brooklyn, from Tonka's Projects. Um, really cool dude. Uh, we reconnected and uh, we spoke a little bit. And um, we spoke a lot for a while, actually. And um, he has a great story that I think we need definitely to share. And it is about addiction, right? And yes. um, I want to go ahead and, and introduce Ito. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. This is Ito. Um, Best Stop Brooklyn, Tompkins Projects, like uh, my boy Ralphie Nomad said. And we're about to uh, you know, get into the whole world of addiction. And it's uh, it's not your common everyday addiction. This is more of a, uh, you know, addiction to uh, prostitution, and uh, you know my story behind it. All right. You know, so, uh, let's get going. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the 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 environment, like our neighborhood, and how that played into it. Why don't you describe to people like you know, the block we grew up on? Well, um, the neighborhood we grew up on, you know, it was always uh male testosterone driven you know it's very um you know we grew up in a uh, bed brooklyn in the 80s and you know that was a rough time the 80s the 90s and you know being a, a strong male was something that you had to be you know uh you had to defend yourself a lot and you know there's a lot of drugs in the neighborhood and a lot of women in the neighborhood and you had to uh, take it day by day, see how everything turned out. And, you know, tomorrow wasn't always promised for everybody. You know, we lost a lot of friends while growing up as well. So, yeah. you know, I had to take advantage of everything. So, you know, we're in the neighborhood, you see stuff. Like, when was your, your first time and how young were you when you introduced to this? Wow. So, my first time was, these were, it was several different occasions that I was with my dad. I was actually too young to realize what was happening, but um, I could tell you about a few of them. Um, My first time was uh, on Linden Boulevard and Pennsylvania Avenue in Brooklyn. And we were going to the White Castles that's over there. And I remember, you know, we went in, it was probably like maybe one o'clock in the morning. And there was, a black female there. It was actually a few of them. But I remember this one specifically because she had nothing on otherwise than like a bikini, you know, a two-piece bikini. And the top piece had lights on it. So like where her nipples would be, it was like it was glowing. It was like lights turning on and off, you know. So it was, it caught my attention. I just, as a kid, stood there looking at her like wondering, but not really knowing what to wonder and um you know my dad being an accountant you know he was constantly driving from business to business and some of the neighborhoods that we went to such as jackson heights queens had a lot of prostitution um as well as huts point in the bronx you know so i I used to see hookers just walking around all the time but i didn't know they were hookers I, i just i didn't know what i thought but I knew where to find them. So that would be pretty much the beginning of how it all started. Man. Um, what was your first interaction? When, when did this like be really begin for you? Wow. Oh, so another one of the first times is that I also, my dad, he lived in, um, he had his own place in Brighton beach. Right. So on um, Brighton Beach and Ocean View Avenue over there, there's a large Russian population. Mm-hmm. And in front of the house, there used to as well be a lot of prostitutes just walking out in the middle of the night, Russian prostitutes walking up and down the street. So I used to just walk outside and just look in amazement like, wow, these women are extremely beautiful. And they're just you know, out here selling themselves. So, you know, I, I, I used to just go and pay them like 30, 40 bucks and, and get a blow job and, you know, sometimes sex. And then, How old were you at this time? Oh, wow. I was young. I was like maybe 15. I was like 15 years old. Wow. Yeah. 
it's okay continue on so <clears throat> so i had different locations where i knew where these women were always at so as i got older maybe into my uh late teens 18 i already had my own car i was working so i used to pretty much you know anytime i wanted you know i i felt aroused or if i was drinking smoking marijuana and i would just go to these different locations and i would pick up women you know i have sex in my vehicle and it you know i i always use protection and it didn't you know i didn't ever catch any STDs from any of these women or anything of that sort. But it was a constant in the back of my head. Well, I just got paid. Let me, you know, go pay one of these women a visit. And uh, I never had bad, uh, you know, anything bad happen. But I, I also moved to Bushwick, Brooklyn. And over there by Gates and Broadway, there's another environment where prostitution was at. So at a certain point, I was able to actually look at a girl and tell if she was a prostitute just by looking at her. And it it was something that was very weird. Um, I recall one time I was working and me and my buddies were standing outside. <clears throat> I looked at a girl and I said, she's a prostitute. And they all laughed. And I actually went online and found her. And they were amazed by that. You know, they were like, how did you do that? I'm like, you know, and I, I just told them, you know, it's something about a way a woman carries herself, the way she walks, the way she dresses. You can look at a woman and you can tell if she has a double life actually doing this. You know, and a lot of times they'll they'll over cover themselves up as if they're hiding something. You know, and I became somewhat of a wolf in finding these women you know so um the addiction grew pretty 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 heavy you know some of the like i would go out of my way knowing that like around factories you would have a large amount of um hookers at night and um i remember even one crazy time i used to have a girlfriend in bushwick and um while the whole family was sleeping I used to sneak hookers into the basement and have sex with them in the basement while my girlfriend and their family was upstairs sleeping. You know, so I took a lot of chances. I went into a lot of abandoned buildings. I've been surrounded by a lot of craziness. Um, you know, I used to get on chat lines as well. You know, I found hookers on chat lines. I found hookers on places like back pages, um, Craigslist, um, all types of internet blogging places. You know, it, as soon as the internet was given to the public, I was already looking for pussy on the so, internet. So you said, I, I know after you said a lot of things right now. So you said every time you got paid, you pretty much was going after it. Like you were buying fucking bread, milk, and eggs. Like that was part of your fucking list. Yeah. Like, so not to cut you off, but so what was your relationship with your mom? Like, how did like, cause I'm, I'm trying to find a connection here. Like it was it more of a sexual thing where you're looking for a, 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 a woman's warmth or like, what were you really well, looking for? One of the things that I didn't realize as a young man was that I, I never seen a lot of, and I, I was never around a lot of guys. In the sense of locker rooms and being in a big area uh, where guys are naked, say, like uh, taking showers together and things of that sort. So I never knew as a young man that I was actually hung more than just the average guy. So I used to have sex with these women and they were constantly like petting my ego. You know, telling me, wow, you you know, you're pretty young, you're pretty hung for such a young man. And I didn't think anything about it. And then as I grew older into my 20s and my 30s, you know, I was always getting this, you know, from the escorts, the prostitutes, the hookers, the, you know, even the, the women in my life. And when you can sexually control a woman, it, it, I was getting high off of that. You know, my relationship with my mom, I, I think my mom is probably one of the most amazing women I ever met. You know, very religious, very, 
you know, she was a teacher, very good woman. And, you know, she, she never brought men home. She was always with my dad. You know, my dad never brought other women around. And this was something I actually just picked up on my own. You know, I knew that I could find amazingly beautiful, almost porn star status women, you know, makeup up double d titties slim waist had surgeries for like 40 50 bucks you know so it wasn't that financially it would dig a hole in my pocket so i would just go out and do it you know i've been in times square uh you know picking up prostitutes in times square new york and i also uh well, let's, let's paint a picture for people real quick though like for times square back in the day is not the times square it is today like Times Square back in the day was littered, literally with triple X was like porn, porn, like, like porn star, porn shops, like back to back to back, like all over for like blocks on end. Yeah. Um, that was like in the early '90s, where before Giuliani came through and and cleaned it up, and you wouldn't have found a Disney store on in Times Square. You would have you really would have saw a pimp, and you would have saw you know hookers on the corner on the streets walking back and forth. Because I remember when I was a kid. My father took me to the McDonald's. I was on Times Square, and he went up picking up someone, and I was in the car. <laughs> and he left me in the car, but he went to his thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so Times Square to paint a picture, like I said, think of um, if you go to your local porn shop, but there are literally thirty to forty, fifty porn shops back to back to back to back to back throughout maybe four or five blocks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in, in Times Square, so go go right ahead. Yeah, that's that's actually interesting, man. That that you 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 had that type of situation, get that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So you know, I would go to Times Square, and um, and even as I got older and I was able to put money away, I I started taking what we were calling mancations. You know, I would specifically set up a, a vacation where I would go to other countries, such as Dominican Republic, and. I would go out and just find women in the street, you know, and it, it, it became really pretty much an addiction that everywhere it followed me. Um, and then in my personal life, I always had a girlfriend since like the age of 13, 14, and I never knew what it was to be faithful. If I had one girl, I had two, I had three, I had four, I had five. And one of the things that actually was tough was going to college. I went to a college where it was around 90% all women. And I used to be in class sitting down with around three or four girls that I had sex with already in the same exact class. You know, I would jump from girl to girl to girl to girl and I didn't care. I had no feelings for how they felt about me generally or of what I was doing you know I would see after a while you know the the looks that they people were giving me and I ignored all the signs I ignored everything of how women cared about me in general you know and now I do have um children with a woman which she loves me to death and she knows every last thing that I've done you know, from posting a lot of things on the internet saying that I'm seeking women. And, you know, um, I also had a job that would bring me from state to state and I would post in different states. I would use different dating apps, you know, to this day. This is an addiction that I'm still dealing with. I would post uh, ads everywhere, you know, just looking for random women and... Now, this sounds kind of dangerous about you posting ads and you, you're, yeah. taking, you're taking a lot of chances, especially, you know, you go on, you're working and you go mm-hmm. from city to city and you're doing things like this. Like, has there any been a time, you know, that you came into some danger doing this stuff? I've been very fortunate that I, my growing up in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, I've always had that, that male driven, I'm not afraid of anything. I've been in situations where, yeah, that I might have been having sex with a woman and the pimp is in the other room, but I've never had a situation where they try to rob me or they try to beat me up because I came there to actually do business, you know, so I came correct. They always came correct. But 
um, I've never had problems, you know, and I think that might be one of the reasons, you know, even one time when I was younger, uh, I was stopped several times by police officers and they always let me go, you know, so I've never been arrested for the situation and it feels like it hasn't caught up to me yet. Um, one of the last times that I was in Dominican Republic, I was in a club. It was a club. It's called Passions, right? and it's known for for prostitution, but it's also known for having the biggest acts. And it's in a small. It's in a big town called Santiago, and um, they're actually closed down right now because supposedly they were having slavery. You know, so as you know now, there's a lot of things happening down in Colombia. There's a lot of things happening in Venezuela. So a lot of these people, they're so poor, they're leaving their country to go to Dominican Republic. And prostitution is very big in Dominican Republic. So as I was there, I was just at the the, the eating area getting a beer. Next thing you know, the SWAT team comes in and... They they grabbed everybody up. You know, they found me with two thousand dollars cash in my pocket, and they were everybody was looking at me like, "Wow, you must be crazy driving around with this type of money in Dominican Republic." You know, people will kill you for something like this. But growing up in Bed Stuy, Brooklyn, I've always had to keep that with me. I've, I've I've I never knew how to let go of being ghetto, so I've always stood my ground everywhere I went. And when things kind of got dark, you know, uh, that Brooklyn always came out of me, you know, stand your ground, keep your chest up, don't show fear. And I've always been able to walk away from bad situations because of that. And I'm, I'm fortunate right now to this day that I haven't caught any STDs or I haven't been arrested. But I do somewhat need help. Because I care about women, but I never knew how to love women. I never knew how to um, make love to a woman. So, but I've always when you been told that when I have sex, I have sex as if I'm a porn star. I was gonna ask you that. Yeah. So how how yeah how is your intimacy or like with your significant other, with your partner? Yeah, it's not intimate. It's more of an aggressive act, you know, and trying to physically hurt somebody, you know. So it's a lot of the choking, a lot of the hair pulling, a lot of, um, you know, and I've gotten a lot of women into anal sex and just literally trying to take over and make them do everything. So it's it's become more of a stronghold on controlling women that I'm with. And I I kind of want to know what it is to be intimate because having so many sex partners and have constantly looking for prostitution, which I actually did earlier today. It, so you, it, it, you're still actively looking? Yeah. And your and your your girls aware of that, or that's something you you hide. Mm, I hide as much as possible, but she's aware of it. You know, she knows pretty much everything I've ever done. She knows all my lies, so I try not to admit it as well. What happens if she hears this podcast? This is a form of me somewhat looking for help. You know, this is a form of me venting. This is. I mean, if she hears it, I I did it for the world to hear my story because there's a lot of men who are dealing with this. Some of them call it a blessing. Some of them call it a problem, you know, depending on the lifestyle you, you tend to live. And, you know, I don't I don't know what would happen, you know, hopefully nothing. But at the same time, hopefully something. But that hopefully something that can happen, no doubt, if you do get help. You can possibly maybe lose your family. Yeah. And that, that, that is a very strong possibility. Well, the problem is that my son's mother, you know, she's an amazing woman, you know, and as, as amazing as she is, 
she comes from the Dominican Republic. And one thing about women from those type of third world countries or what we consider third world countries, they have a very servitude attitude. You know, you bring home the money, they take care of everything else, you know, but just make sure you do your half and you know, she loves me. You know, she doesn't know what it is to be in other relationships with other men. And, you know, we've been together for a very long time. And her knowing, because I, I also have another girlfriend, and they both know about each other. You know, wow. so it's, it's... So, so you you have another girlfriend. You have yeah. your, your main chick. You're not married to her, are you? No. No, so you have... But she's your main partner. Yeah, she's the, the, the mother of both of my kids. And you have a side chick, and they and they know of each other. Yes. So how do you expect to 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 really get help if you're in an environment that you've created with people who are allowing you to still run amok? I have no idea. It's, and that's the weird part is that everybody's allowing. No one. I have. I haven't been punished for what I've done. Because yeah. this is a form of manipulation, or this is manipulation. Oh, so you're you're it, manipulating. It is, yeah. it is huge. And I'm hurting everybody because the other woman that I'm with, she's a, a very beautiful Colombian woman. And she's young, you know, she's maybe like 25 years old. And physically, she's what I want. But I don't want that. Because mentally, it's not what I want. So what do you want? What do I want? I, I'm not sure what I want. When you manipulate people for so long and you live this type of lifestyle, you start asking yourself, can I have two wives at the same time? Can we all just live together? Can I make this work out? You know, and I've looked into different type of living situations. I've even asked both of them if they wanted to meet each other, you know, because I thought to myself, hey, maybe if they meet each other, they can resolve this situation for me. And, and what you know, do they say to that, though? What do they say to about they, meeting each they, other? They don't want to meet each other, you know, but they both want me to separate from my situation as well. So do you love them? Wow. Um, I think I love having control. I don't think I, I, I don't think I ever knew what love truly is because of how I live. So right now it's it's more of a, it's more of an agreement that you have with them. Not so much love. Is that a, is that a, a convenience? Yeah. Yeah. It's an agreement out of convenience. So, you know, if they both of them was to hear this and it gets around, you're really putting them on the spot as well, though, right? Yes. Like, this, is, like you, you, this is your your gravity right now, and and the the women that you do have around you that you are, you know, that's really close to you right now. You know, you're but gonna put them in a, in a predicament. They both know about my sexual life. Sure, but I'm sure they're not they're not telling anybody else though. Because they realize how my behavior is unlike any man they've met. You know, and you know, when you watch a porn video, at least any good ones, you would see that it's uh, it's a little bit of everything in it, you know, and for some reason I had that in my head of okay, this is how sex should be done. You know, and and another issue I had is that I've, at a young age, I told myself, I want to have sex with every race in the world, you know, and I went down that journey to look for Asian women, Mexican women, uh, Arabic women, white women, black women, and I've went down the line pretty far, you know, so it, it. So now it's become a sport. Yeah. It's it's become a sport where there's actually no winners, no achievements, just addiction, you know. And it's 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 scary at times, you know, because I see other people 
that there's a bond. And that bond is through the struggles, through the ups and the downs and everything. And the happiness that the woman has. Because one thing about the women I'm with, they're not happy with me. They well, love me, right. but they're happy because of my actions. And I, I realize that I mean, something's going to have to change. You know, I'm, I'm getting to a certain point in my life. I'm almost 38 years old now. And I've been seeing prostitutes for over 20 years. You know, and I'm adding to the problem of human trafficking. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult. So you're, you're hoping you can, by, by talking this out, could try to lead you to therapy, right? But have you really sought out therapy like the way you sought out prostitution? I've, I've always felt like I was too manly to see a therapist. You know, and then I've I looked on the internet. What does that What does that mean exactly? You're too manly to seek out therapists. What does that mean that to I, you? That I was that I, that I'm too strong of a man to go see a therapist. I've always felt that hey, if you need somebody to explain to you what your own problem is and you know what your own problem is, you're pretty much just throwing money in the air. I mean, it just you know that's something for for weak men. Men that can't stand up to their issues and and fight their issues on their own. You know, that's but, kind the, of, the, but that's what you're doing now. You what you just described as being a weak man. Yeah. That's your situation you're in right now. You're you 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 are portraying a weak man right now because you, you can't commit. You're you're addicted to sex. You're 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 treating women as more than an object. It's just like like I said, like a sport. And then you're putting two women. With one woman that has your children, um, in a situation that's like, and then you that's dire, and then you you're trying to get them, you're trying to figure out situations to where, how to live together. Yeah. So so how is that manly, and then not go finding therapy manly? Well, this is the one thing is that I never knew what it was to be a man. You know, I I've always thought that hey. You know, growing up where I grew up at, I didn't realize that most of my friends didn't have their fathers there with them. So you had a bunch of guys just running around saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to fuck this girl. Oh, he, you know, let's see who can fuck who first. And I've even had friends have kids off of bets. You know, some of my friends went to the club, came home with a girl and got this stranger pregnant. And, you know, a lot of problems came from that. And this is pretty much the environment I grew up around, you know, and I've always, I also pulled a lot of my own personal friends into the fire, you know, hey, let's go check this out, check, you know, let's go to this whorehouse, go to that whorehouse. And, you know, to even to the extent where one of my uh, previous jobs, and I'm talking about a high end quality company. I was taking, I was inviting the CEOs of the companies where I worked at to these whorehouses, you know, and p- people were amazed of, of the surroundings that I was putting myself in. You know, I became part of swinger clubs. I've met um, porn stars. I've, they've taught me how to use, use the system on setting up apartments, um, you know, how, you know, something as simple as getting a credit card that gives you frequent flyer miles so you can get free tickets and, um, you know, going to other countries and instead of going to like a resort or something, you know, set up, uh, find a, a real estate agent out there who can get you a nice location in a, in a neighborhood. And, you know, for some reason, it's like everywhere I go, I can spot those type of people. And it's a, it's it's somewhat of a community of us. And we find each other everywhere. So there's been times that I'm watching porn and I see the same people I've met in other countries, you know, recording porn and putting it on the Internet. So it's it's been weird. Yeah, it's 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 more than just you know it's. You put yourself in this predicament for many years. You yeah. you you have, you have this disease, right? 
you have this addiction. Mm-hmm. You re you have sought out no type of no help, but then you bring these other women in, these innocent women, to a certain point, and include them into this lifestyle, and then you look you're hoping and and looking for them to have some type of acceptance in it, which partially they have accepted some of it because they know of each other. Yeah, and because you have no true relationship with them, like you know you said, mother of your children is very nice woman but she's more of that servant type of woman and you don't know how to love or receive love well I I receive it I receive a lot of love you know and that's that's one of the things that um, I don't deserve it to be honest with you Um, I don't deserve uh, my wife the family and all the loving people in her family and it's 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 been weird, man, because I've I've stepped over the line. I've said things I should have never said. And you know, I'll give you an example. You know, to uh, my Colombian girlfriend, I've mentioned to her, you know, let's have threesomes with your friends. You know, and with um, my my son's mother, you know, I've told her. I said, you know, um. No, no, I, I, I'll have sex with your sister. You know, so it's, it's, I've gone down the road of saying things that I should have never said. And what was the responses to that? Did they check you? Did they say, what the fuck, nigga? Like, what, like, what was the response? Like, no, a lot of times when I'm being rude, I'm being disrespectful, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not responding to that. You know, it's, I've been able to get away with almost anything and everything. And it's, it's been a weird situation because I'm in a house, I grew up in a house with nothing but women. I've been surrounded by nothing but women, my best friends and people who really stick their necks out for me have almost always been women. So... And yet you have this this perception of them as just a piece of meat. Yeah. I I've always felt like, wow, if I could find one woman, I could find another. You know, I I haven't really been scared to lose any of these women. I've always just because uh, you, you, you don't love them. If you love someone, that's when the fear of losing someone comes into play. But you don't you don't have love for these women. You don't love these women. You may you know, you may have you know how can I say it? Like you may have like a love for them, you're not in love with them. You know what I'm saying? Like if there was a bounce today, you'd be like, Oh fuck it. I mean just you even said like, yeah, honest, honest, t- today man, that you you were looking I for somebody. I don't else. think I've ever loved any woman. I yeah, think yeah. I love what they do for me. Right. You know, I love that they cook, they clean, you know, and give me back massages. But I've never had that feeling of waking up in the morning and like, wow, I love the way her hair smells. I love just holding her. I just, I can't wait to get home to her. You know, my whole thing was like, okay, let me make as much money as possible, work as hard as I can. You know, uh, you know, if I got to send her and the kids on vacation, here's as much money as I can give you. And throughout that whole time, you know, I would be bringing prostitutes over and, you know, my girlfriends. And then I would get on, you know, on dating apps like Tinder and look out, you know, look for more and more and more women. You know, and. Have you ever brought these women home? Oh, plenty of times plenty of times with white I've, knowing or unknowingly she knows she knows i've i've gotten caught red-handed on camera you know um it's been a lot of bad situations when it comes to like my son's mother like when she finally broke down and decided to uh you know slap the shit out of me punch me in my face choke me and you know i accepted i just stood there and you know i let her bet and I, I've told her, you know, the women are not the problem. You know, I'm the problem. 
you know, and she, she, she is, you know, she stands by my side no matter what, you know, and there's going to be a time that everyone has a breaking point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And whatever her breaking point is, you know, you're not aware whether it would be just her leaving or her maybe even physically trying to harm you because, you know, putting someone through that every single day as well, like, you know, at this point, you're really selfish. Yeah, I'm extremely selfish. I, I, I've realized that, and I've always been told that by women. You know, I've, I'm a very selfish man. I'm an asshole, you know, but for some reason, you know, they love that. And I feed into it. You know, I was told by an older woman that, you know, the day I have kids with a woman, that's when I'm going to really be in love. And that didn't work out the way they said it was going to work out. Yeah, because your your addiction is a higher priority. You know, it's it's something. Yeah, you're you're right. It is a high priority, and it's it's a high that I get when I can meet these women that are just extremely beautiful. You know, they have all the plastic surgery done. They're young. They're beautiful. You know, all shapes and sizes, all nationalities, and. I could get them anytime I want. You know, if I wanted an Asian right now, I'll go get an Asian. If I wanted a, a Venezuelan, a Colombian, a Puerto Rican, Dominican, a black or white, in just a few minutes, I can have that in my bed very easily. Right, but that's that's also a payment, though. That's not because you made a true human connection with someone and they want to be with you. It's it's a, a pay for hire. Yes, it is. Otherwise, then, um, you know. Then after, other than that, then you don't have none of that shit. Pretty much, you know, um, even when I go out, I tend to have a goal. You know, and my goal is to, if I go to the club, pick up a girl, bring her home, and fuck her. So you're a prowler as well, then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In every sense possible. You know, and it's 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 scary. So how yeah. how are you how are you functioning throughout the day then? Like what is when you wake up when Ito wakes up in the morning, what's the first thing that runs to your fucking head? Well, the only thing that really runs to my head is I I have two boys that I really love. Um, I don't have absolutely anybody that I can depend on, you know, family wise. So I go to work every day. You know, I work seven days a week at one job. My other job, um, I, I do snow removal and I do anything else to pretty much make money. So financially, I wake up every single day knowing that I got to put money away. I got to save money and I got to be but, on top of my but, game. But is this to, to support? This is obviously to support your habit, though. Is to support my habit, to support myself, and to make sure that if anything does go wrong, financially, I could take care of myself. So how much money do you spend a month on this? Oh, wow. Uh, Last say, month. Let's say the month of January. Well, there's months, it, it, it goes up and down, because I can go to a strip club and easily go through $300 just in one night. And the next day, I, you know, I might stay quiet for a few days, then go see a, a, a forty, fifty dollar whore real quick, and you so know, let's say, it, it's, it, a, it's it a thousand. Like five. It could be like somewhere between five and, and a thousand a month. Just enough. So you're looking at maybe close to let's just say a thousand. That's twelve thousand dollars a year you're just spending on sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you've been do, and you've been doing this for twenty years. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So with all that money, you know how much therapy you could have fucking got? <laughs> A lot of therapy, man. And continuous, because this is something that just going in for a quick session or two, this is something that's going to be long term for you, because this is, if you truly want help, you know what I'm saying, and, and you coming out like this, you know, this is, you coming out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 
you know, I'm going to promote this episode. Like I promote every other guest. You mm, know what I'm saying? Definitely. And I'm not sure if you're going to promote it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, if someone does, because, you know, our circle is our circle. You know, mm-hmm. we do know each other. And if mm-hmm. someone in our circle does hear this, it only takes one person. And then from there, you know, fire catches on. Yeah. What You know, what what do you really want from life? Like, what, what do you, you know, you, you work seven days a week. You have two or three jobs. You spend a thousand dollars a month just on getting the ass. You know, you, you're you're kind of checking off your list, like you said. You have these kind of you have these these fucked up goals, yeah. and um, you have two women that you're putting that you should really just let go because it's not fair to them. And how do you? You have, so you have two boys. How can you even connect with them in a level when they have a girlfriend? You can't really give them advice. Well, I talk to my son a lot. And the advice I give him is, I don't want him to be like, you know, I I, I explain to him the details of what is it in a relationship? What is it to be loyal? What is it going to take for him to be happy? You know, and. But you can't describe love because you haven't experienced it. I can't describe it, but I think I I understand the steps to get there, you know. And it, it's been more physical with me than mental. Right. Because you can't really tell him the connection that you can't describe to him a connection was like between a man and a woman because you've never had that connection. Well, the closest thing I had was a, a relationship when I was like, you know, 15, 16, you know, right. first love. And, uh, you know, that ended up in heartbreak. But uh, for that moment that it did last, you know, I did wake up every day just only thinking about her, wanting her. And, you know, I, I even stopped going to school just so we could hang out together every single day. You know, so I, I've, I've felt you know, that childhood somewhat, but it's been a long time since I felt that way. It's been a long time since I can actually honestly look at a woman in her face and be like, I really love this woman. I really care. And I throw that word around easily with these, with with women. And it's not just the two that I'm with now. It's with the last 15 relationships. You know, I've had, and it's, I've, I've had a lot of relationships, man, and I really don't know where this is going. Yeah, you seem like you don't. You seem, you know, you seem really unsure. Like, it's, I'm glad that you are speaking about it. You know, how long have you been holding this, this truth or this lie? Because you've been you've been hiding it, but I, I, you know, I, you also been really this, kind this of up front with it too. Like it's weird, you're, you're lying in up front at the same time. Like, yeah, because when it comes to my friends, they all know. My coworkers, they know. You know, so this is something you can't really speak to with your coworkers. Like, yeah, I so invite this is, you. Invite so this is really like your your show bone at that point. Like, yo, I, I this is what yeah. I do. I can, yeah. I can fucking hook you up. Let's yeah. let's do this. What does that do for you? Well, it's it, it's it's kind of like um, you know, at times I I do look to be with other people, and these are the things that I say, hey, you want to go hang out with this? You know, this is what we can do, and you know, we go out, have some drinks, party for a while, and if we don't pick something up, hey, you know, keep forty fifty bucks set aside, and you know, we go to the local warehouse when we're done. And this has always been strictly women. Oh yeah, you know I've I've haven't gone down the road of being bisexual or or any, or or gay. So I, I haven't. I've been around other naked males, like you know, in swinger clubs. So it's I've sat there watching people have sex, and people have watched me have sex. You know, total strangers. And because of this heightened addiction, 
you didn't give a fuck about your safety at all. Well, a lot of these places, when it when it comes to like let's say swinger clubs, I'm it it, it has its own security, you know, and it has a a, a following. You know, everything's well organized and people tend to all go for the same reasons, you know. So instead of the guys being aggressive towards each other, hey, you got a woman there, spend some time with her, enjoy yourself. And, you know, but um, when it comes to more of, let's say, the in calls, you know, you're going to a woman's house. There's there's signs of things that can go wrong. You know, um, I stay away from projects. I stay away from certain things. Like, I kind of learned the in and outs of how to know if there's going to be danger or not. You know, uh, I also understand the verbiage. You know, if you're going to go see a woman and she's openly talking about sex over the phone or she allows you to talk like that or when you get there if she's saying hey it's 150 dollars for a blow job for example that is more than likely being recorded you know and those type of situations you gotta just candidly say hey i came here for a back massage you know or a full body massage i didn't come here for sex and it kind of keeps you out of the uh, certain entrapment type of situations so i did my homework i looked into this very deep and i try to always figure out hey if i get into a situation how can i get out and you know i had friends that they they go into certain places and they've been arrested for the same exact thing that i've done you know but i've actually realized that hey For example, in Long Island, New York, Connecticut, these are places where they don't have the same type of tax money. So what happens a lot is that police officers tend to set up sting, sting operations. And these sting operations is where you get easily get caught. You know, so I've I've somewhat set up a way to not get in trouble, even though I'm doing so many so many stupid things. And it's not something to be proud of, because to be honest, if I knew all this was going to happen, I I, I don't think I would have gone down this road. No, you see, you had a like your father exposed to it. Did did he ever do it? Um, that you know of? I'm, I'm thinking I would say yes, but that would be only an opinion. And that's because I've never seen him do it. But he's in all all the same neighborhoods I was in, you know. And my father did a lot of drugs when he was, um, you know, in his day. You know, he came from the hippie days. So I can only imagine how it was when free love was free. So I, I would say yes, but I would also say no because I'm not talking facts. I'm only talking opinion. Right. And this is this is just a stunning, you know, um, conversation we're having. You know, it's like it's very interesting, and how you have developed a system, and you've 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 got all this knowledge about that world. It's its own world. You know what I'm saying? And and you've you definitely chosen to do homework and you studied and you you networked within that world. Yeah. yeah. You know I'm allowed to places where a lot of people are not allowed into. You know, there's a there's a building in Queens where it's three floors and in each and every room there's a, a different uh, prostitute or a different hooker in each and every room. And if you call the phone number that's associated with that no one's going to pick up. You know, you got to know the address just by knowing it. You have to be uh, part of their system. They got to have your phone number. And that's by working your way into these neighborhoods. You know, these uh, uh, on Roosevelt Avenue where prostitution is always heavy. You know, they they see me, they know me. Um, I, I receive text messages every single day. 
you know, oh, here's the new girl. They'll send me an actual picture of the girl. And, you know, it's up to me if I want to pass by. You know, I received my picture today, yesterday, the day before that. You know, um, the same thing with the Asians. You know, the Asians don't do business with just anybody. And, you know, they're very candid with uh, sending me text messages, sending me pictures and, you know, feeding feeding the animal. They understand that this is a, this is an addiction and there's a lot of money involved in this type of world. And they want to keep me addicted as well as I, you know, I have this urge to be with different random women. Now, now with sex trafficking being so huge, and it's very, it's very large in America, actually. Um, mm-hmm. I would have to assume that you've had sex with with young girls. Well, without you know, how do you know you're not going to card them? You're not going to know as, their as, actual as far age. As young girls, um, like let's say under the age of eighteen, I I really doubt it. Um, I I can't say I, I'm guaranteed for sure. But I really, really doubt it because most of these women are are of older women. You know, they're right. they're. Um, but they're you know, you're you're in an environment they're, where they're there. Yeah, they're there. No one shows ID. No one says anything. It's just, hey, here's a service. And yeah, there's a lot of young women who can be put into these type of situations you know especially in the days when times square was heavy you know times square was known as a place where people where young girls would go to and run away and come to new york city and stay in the port authority which you know the port the port authority is always a place no matter in what state you're in where you can find women you know runaways and it's it's been it's it's had its time you know, I paid the Port Authority a visit a few times. So, you know, but, what is what does a, a regular week look like for you? Like, you know, like, like I said, like you know, you get up in the morning, and you're getting these text uh, messages. Like, so you're you're just you can't get away from it. Well, nor do you want the, to. This is the thing about it. Um, a regular day, man, is one thing I try not to do is masturbate. Because I want to have, to be able that if I, you know, a man of a certain age, if I want to go two, three rounds, I need to have that available. So I've, I've started taking sex pills at a, at a young age. You know, a lot of Like with people, Viagra and Cialis type shit? Every single thing I could get my hands on. You know, I've done studies on that as well. You know, what are the, the strongest pills possible? What are the pills that are... Um, porn stars take and you know things of that sort and you know i i would go in there and just tear something up real quick and get out of there you know so it's it's a regular day for me would be you know i wake up go to work at a certain time and you know it's usually midday i would start getting text messages especially when it gets close to uh to friday and those text messages would be you know, inviting me, hey, come to this location, come to that location. And it got to the point that even some of my friends, close friends that we grew up with, you know, had their own whorehouse, you know, and I used to go visit them and, hey, you know, here's 30 bucks and get in and out. And, you know, I've I've never witnessed anything of this, of, of, minors you know i've never seen something like hey a 14 year old girl 13 year old girl something of that sort but um i would actually let me tell you a story man i've I've actually mentioned this the other day it was a scary situation that happened to me once i was around 18 years old it was my very first uh, job in the touring business and I'm on my way to work, right? I'm already addicted. I already got into this point of, um, you know, that I, I, I'm i paying for prostitution and everything, right? And as I'm on my way to work, I, I it's around 5 o'clock in the morning. There's this girl. She was standing maybe 5 foot 7. Uh, 
a good 150 pounds, real nice, thick, good height, uh, maybe a D-cup chest, and, you know, real pretty. She was standing, um, I was in Harlem, she was standing in front of her building, and, you know, she called me over, we had a quick conversation, and, you know, she followed me to my job, you know, and I used to work by myself at that time, so, you know, keeping her at work with me, it, it was nothing. And, you know, I, I spoke to her. She she told me she was 18. Uh, she sure damn looked it. And, you know, we, we, we were talking for, for a while. She was very, very sexual, you know. And I had to go home. The end of the day came. I, you know, she was just lingering around. And she decided, hey, she's going to hang out with the other guys that are there. So. I come back the next day and, you know, the guys were telling me, oh, yeah, she was hanging out with this and this person. And, you know, he ended up having sex with her, you know. So I was like, wow, that's that's crazy. And I, I, I recall it being my birthday at that time. I think I just turned 18 and she we end up having having sex, you know, me and this lady. And I think it was like maybe one or two more days went by. And I was just like, hey, I can't have this girl lingering around like this. Like, you know, it's I, I can't, you know. So I just told her, I said, you know, I'll, I'll see you after work or, you know, whatever it may be. And next thing you know, uh, while I'm sitting at work, the phone rings, you know, and it, it, it's a police officer. And the police officer tells me, hey, I'm, um, we're looking for this girl, you know, and this and this is her name. And, you know, the name wasn't familiar. Uh, I didn't I didn't recognize the name. And they told me, hey, stay away from her. You know, she's 13 years old. And I was like, well, you know, I don't know anybody by that name. And I'm definitely not a 13 year old. And, you know, it went through my mind like, wow. Why would the cops be calling here? So when the young lady came by again, I called her not by the name she gave me, but I called her by the name the police officer said. And she turned around and responded. And at that moment, my heart just dropped. My heart, I was, I got nervous. I was, and you know, I asked her, you know, why is she, why did she lie about her age? You know, are you a runaway? You know, is this your situation? You know, why are you just completely putting people in danger and, and not, you know, saying anything, you know? And at that moment, I completely cut all ties. I've completely walked away. And to this day, you know, it's probably like 18 years later, but I've no more than that. It's probably like 20 years, 20 years ago. Never heard from her again, never seen her again. But by the way she was acting and the way she was living, she has probably dealing with a lot of issues from much, much younger. She might have been molested as a child. And I would guess that a lot of people who live this type of life have some type of sexual dysfunction. Were you ever molested as a child? Uh, no, as far as I remember, no. I mean, I was always very uh, looking up girls' skirts at a very young age. You know, um, I could go back as far as like junior high school, you know, fingering girls, you know, in class and, and um, you know, cutting class to the, I think I was like in seventh grade at the time, just cutting class, going to different places to have sex. And, you know, it would be me and my homeboy with his girl and my girl, you know, and we'll all just go to somebody's house and just, you know, do us as kids. You know, so I've seen a little bit of everything. So, and you don't fear anything at work, like, you know, because this is not something you really want to kind of, be known and you say you know you kind of get that you know i'm not i guess I'm, I'm the cool kid on the block with the information that you can provide but why would you even 
disclose it at work? Well, I don't work with um, women. That's one thing. Right. Uh, it's it's real a real manly construction, hardcore type of uh, location where everybody's smoking, and you probably got a couple of coke heads out there as well. You know, so when everybody's talking, everybody has their uh, you, you know their their stories and their situations on different things that have could have happened. You know, so. Um, one thing is that, uh, a lot of these guys actually do want to actually hang out and, and meet prostitutes and meet, um, different type of women, you know? So it's, and I've never gotten a, really a negative response from anybody. And you just hooking them up or are you taking kind of payment? Like, Yo, I can hook you up, give me 50 bucks and I can take you to the spot. Um, No. I've always just taken them there as, you know, it's like, hey, you know, just have fun. You know, I've, I've never, I've probably had a friend pay for one one time, but, uh, you know, otherwise than that, everything has been just basic, you know. Let's go hang out. We all party. You know, and to be honest, because I work so much, I usually have more money than most of my friends anyway. So, did you grow up, um, did you grow up religious? Um, or in the I, religion? I grew up learning several different religions. Uh, my grandmother was Catholic, and then um, my mom was Jehovah Witness. Uh, my dad was atheist. Um, in the streets, I became Muslim for a little bit of time. Um, I was a five percenter, what they call God body. Yeah, and, right. Uh, the mathematics, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was math. And let me see what else. Uh, and then, yeah, then I became atheist myself. I started studying a lot of science and getting involved in a lot of um, debates and just trying to figure out things more and more and more as I got older. And, yeah, pretty much just that. So you're home. You're talking to me. Wifey's in the other room, right? Mm -hmm. And you have this life that you've been, been leading lying about it open about it you know it's, it's like i said you're you're you kind of both into the spectrum at the same time and when are you gonna when, when are you gonna allow these women to have their life back well that's the thing is that i tried to leave and it's never been on good terms it's always been like hey it's not working out. I don't want to be with you anymore. You know, you're not the one for me. And they don't want me to leave. Is it because you know? you're providing? Um, Is it financial? Are you giving them a lifestyle that they're like, yo, if he leaves, then I can't live a certain way? Um, I don't think so. You know, maybe, maybe in one aspect. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll pay most of the bills and things like that, but they have good families. You know, they have people who would help them out, give them a place to stay if necessary. Um, but the other one, you know, she has her own place. She has her own job, handles her own business. Um, when it comes to her, it just happens to be that that the sex is something that she's addicted to it. you know that that feeling of, of just having a man being so aggressive with her you know it's it comes at times as as an addiction because most men at, at a young age don't know how to perform right and i've always been a performer you know and it, it's something that i also am addicted to to wanting to be the best that there is and you know, it, it, it hurts them. You know, she wants to have a baby one day, and, and I don't want to have any more kids. You know, at this point, I'm actually thinking about having a, a vasectomy, you know, to make sure I don't have any more kids. And did, did you get her into that hardcore shit, or was she already into it? Oh, I got her into it. I got both of them into it, you know. I got almost every female that I ever dealt with into it. You know, they didn't know about... um. You know, just 
you know, having a guy dominate them like that, you know, they dealt with more of a, a sensual, more of a loving man, you know, and when when you do certain things to a woman, it it can become addictive to them as well. You know, they want to have a certain type of sex. They want to be satisfied a certain type of way. And when I when I started when I was introduced to the world of taking pills, you know, now I'll, I could have sex for four hours, you know, and not even come. And you know, they want you know most women they want a guy who can last long. You know, so it wasn't that I had any erectile dysfunction issue. It was more of a, hey, how long can you actually last now? You know, uh, most people have sex for, let's say, a half an hour, you know, and when a woman is worn out and, you know, if a relationship doesn't work out and the next guy doesn't perform, it's 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 a way of... um hurting the next person's relationship as well. Because you mentioned perform a few times. What do you mean by that, perform? Like... Yeah. I didn't pick up on that, but you did. Wow. Um, it's the whole, the whole action, the whole, you know, once again, I have, I have more of that, um, that porn way of having sex. Like, hey, we have a setup. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. You know, we're going to do in this many positions. You know, we're going to have regular sex, anal sex. I'm going to choke you. I'm going to, you know, uh, make you vomit. It's, it's, a, it, it, it can, psychologically, those things can take over a person. And at times, those things can turn people on a lot. You know, so most men don't really go that far down the road and when a woman has that and no longer has that and she's just having you know basic sex missionary doggy style things of that sort with the next guy they're left unsatisfied so what i realized is that being sexually dominant over these women kind of keeps a lot of them from moving You know, and it's not only with younger women, it's with older women, you know, women in their 30s, women in their 40s that just never had sex like that. You know, so it's a whole system that I that I made happen. And I once I put all these things together, it's considered a performance. So have you ever become a gigolo? Um, I thought about it and it was brought to my attention uh that most well gigolo would be a man who who uses a woman for money right right yeah he pretty much you pretty, i'm a well, prostitute pretty much yeah well which we're going around and you know you, no it's, it's more of a professional type of i tried i tried like to put something out there but i never paid attention to it i never really made it a goal you know it was more of a me going after them type of situation but um you know, the one thing that I that I was told is that um, men pay more money, and if you get into this type of lifestyle, you you if you want to make money, more than likely you're gonna have to do gay stuff. You're gonna have to be bisexual. You're gonna have to perform for men, and that just never really called my attention. So I, once I found that out, and you know, I had male friends that I grew up with that, you know, that was one of their goals. I was just like, you know, something, I don't think I want to make that my goal, you know, because it's just too much gay stuff. And I don't mind if another man sees me performing on a woman, but it's just something that I have, I, I think it would eat away at me too much to, Let's say let a let a let a man pay me to give me a blowjob. You know, I think that would bother me a lot, and I I don't want to open that door. You know, and it's some simple things like if a woman tries to put her finger up my butt or something like that, I can't go I can't go down that road neither. It just never. But you could, but you can choke them out, make them vomit, anal. But for you, 
It's not reciprocated. No, no. It's definitely a, it's a one way street. Yeah, it's a one way street. But at the same time, I've never met a woman that I had um consistent relationships um you know um sexual encounters with to make that happen. You know, um, a lot of that has to do with comfort. Um, the only other place I've seen that was more of a, in the swinger clubs. When you go to swinger clubs, you know, you have women who can fuck five, six guys, you know, and think nothing of it. And, you know, women that will allow you to tie them, um, you know, you'll tie them up and just aggressively, you know, play with their pussies or whatever it is that you want to do. You know, I, I, it's been around things like that, that I've seen women that are, really really aggressive but I, I i don't know i've never i haven't reached that extent yet and um i have wanted to you know but at times i think the one thing that does save me is working so much you know being able to have to constantly go to work come home go to sleep go to work go to sleep it slowed me down a lot when it comes to me wanting to go out of my way to go do something and Conscience, you know, my conscience is eating away at me, you know, because those are things that I can be doing with my loved one and, uh, you know. But, but, you, but you don't have one. You know, you, that's, you know, we're, we're, we're with the mother of my child, you know, I, I should be able to be home with her more and, you know, be, you know. You, 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 you have to relearn something totally new. Yeah, because then at this point you've you've manip- you've manipulated and trained them so much. Yeah. If yeah. you were to try to turn back, would they even accept you? It's 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 going to be very weird because at times I do want to just start over and walk away from everything. But, you know, at this point, I got kids involved. You, know, you can't just turn around and walk away from the kids. You know, that's what makes it most difficult. No, you can't. But at the same time, too, the environment that you're, you're bringing up, you know, it's only but for so long before your kids are going to get older. Kids are pretty smart. They're going to figure something out. You know what I'm saying? And that's something you, you don't want to have, right? No. And definitely don't want to, that's something you don't want to pass down to your sons. No, oh, definitely. I, I actually want to take counter steps to make sure that my kids don't go down this road. You know, I, you know, I want them to know the importance of being with a woman that you love and a woman that um, you care about, and also letting them know that you know one thing that I heard the other day that it's very important that it's better to be with a loyal seven than to be with a disloyal 10, you know, a disloyal dime, you know, and And that's a rating. That's a rating of a woman you're talking about. Yes. You know, we can rate them one to 10. So, you know, it's better to have a loyal seven than a disloyal dime, you know, and what qualities to look for in a woman, because I think that one of the, you're looking for, you're looking for insecure women. That was what I was about to say. Okay. I think a lot of it has to do that these women I'm dealing with are very broken already. You know, they're broken, they're insecure, um, they're inexperienced, you know, and very easy to manipulate. So whatever you are giving them is better what they had before. At times, yeah. Because at least, you know, the certain things I'm not doing. Physically, I'm not, right. you know, I, I don't hit women. Mm-hmm. And then financially, I, I don't ask women for money. You know, I've always been like, hey, you know, is everything okay? You need your cell phone bill paid. You need anything paid. You know, do you need anything for your kids or, you know, food? Or just, you know, there's been times that I've met with women, you know, like, for example, I put a ad on Craigslist and... I was out of state staying in a hotel. Some woman, you know, um, she answered the ad. Um, you know, she she was telling me that, you know, she was very lonely because um she had a child that had like a muscular um dystrophy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he he was um pretty much bedridden 
and in a bad situation. So, you know, she doesn't really have a, a, a man in her life. And, you know, we end up um, being intimate and we end up having sex. And then after that, you know, I just put money in her bag. You know, I, she didn't act for it or anything like that. But, I, you know, I put money in there. And to this day, we're still friends. You know, and I haven't seen her since then. But, um, you know, they see that at least when you look at the average man nowadays, a lot of men are not working, you know. And when you have a man that's at least willing to help you pay your bills and is not physically um, trying to hurt you and, you know, handsome young man, it works out. You know, I found a niche that works in a system where so many things are broken in a broken system itself. But that means you just take advantage of the situation. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You just, yeah. you just take advantage of the situation and you're, 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 you're praying on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you, I can, you, I can see a weak woman very easily. And then that's the ones you go for. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I, because I don't, you can't, you don't enough. want a strong, you don't want a strong independent woman. I think that type of woman might change me, you know, but at the same time, I don't know if I would ever be faithful to her, no matter how pretty or how independent or how smart she is. You know, I I, I don't know if, you know, and I see it happening all the time. You know, you got Robert Kraft from the Patriots who just got caught up in his situation in Florida. You got Tristan Thompson, who just cheated on uh, Khloe Kardashian. So you see these smart, beautiful women. And no matter what you look like in the form, shape, religion, sexuality, or, or you know, whatever your background might be, every, uh, almost everybody's going through this situation. You know, everybody's cheating. You know, and sometimes I, I kind of see it that social media is and the Internet itself is kind of a gift and a curse when it comes to the ability to find things of that you know people to have sex with you know so i i asked myself you know i i started saying i don't cheat but i am unfaithful do you find yourself to be a narcissist yeah yeah and and i get along really well with other narcissists and people who are just like me. You're, you're wanting help. How, on a scale of one to ten, how much help do you really want to get? Like, is that a one? Is it really at a ten? You really, really want help, or is this just something to, I don't know, to to satisfy your your justification of it, but not really seek help? So you can say, yo, you know what? I I spoke about it. It's out there, and that's it. Well, on a scale value, I would put it in the middle at five. But I also had a weird situation not too long ago. Um, I haven't smoked marijuana in a very long time. And the other day, you know, one thing that marijuana does is make you, it makes you paranoid. It makes you think. And I, I um, I had some, my friend gave me, you know, he had the oil pen and I took a couple of pulls from it. I was like, you know, fuck it. Let's kill some time. I became so paranoid. Everything was just like, wow, what the fuck are you doing? It was just a moment of clarity. Like, hey, you know, there's a possibility you could get one of these girls pregnant because I do have a lot of um, unprotected sex. You know, so I could end up having fucking a child with another woman that doesn't deserve to have me in her life. Or, you know, it might cause a very, you know, 18 years or, you know, a lifetime of financial disruption in my life because of my sexual activities. And see, right there, what you just said, how you described the situation was more, I would think you said, just a financial disruption and not really saying anything about the kid itself or the act of having sharing that moment with 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 someone so you're you're very 
blocked off or has blocked really blocked yourself from having a true sense of, of love for that type of experience. You're right. You're right. You know, um, so you have unprotected sex with the two women you're with, not with the women that you yeah. seek. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, there's 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 other ones, you know, women that I've been having sex with for over 10 years, you know, that I, I see maybe once or twice a year for the last 10 years, you know, we're friends on social media and, you know, every once in a while we'd be like, hey, you know, what are you doing? Let's hang out and let's hook up, you know, so it's 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 been a long jeopardy of you know, not just the two that I have, but a whole package of like maybe a group of 10, you know, in total that I'm actually really good friends with. So you really set yourself up to have backups and over backups just in case, whether well, if you don't go to, to a prostitution house or if you're bored with the two chicks you're with, they can say, let me hit this chick up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so and a, a lot of these women happen to be, um, you know, single mothers right. that, you know, if I need, if I, if I need them, you know, I call them and I'm, you know, just put a few dollars in their pockets and, you know, it helps them with their bills and, you know, in return, you know, we have a good time. But yet again, you, they, these are broken women. These are women who have some type of issue that you preyed on. Yeah. That you yeah. you sort it out on purpose. Yeah. So you said you that you're at a five for trying to get help. That doesn't really say you, you're too serious. Like that's because at know, times I'm not sure if I want help. You know, at times I feel like, hey, you know something, I need to just have my own place, have my own everything, and just live the life I choose to live. How long do you think you can live this life? You're going to get old one day. That's the only issue, you know, that I've I've seen so far is the fact of me, you know, and, and I've spoken to to random older men because that's one thing I don't have. I don't have like that older guy I can go to and and just talk to you know me and I, I don't have those uh, mentors in my life and never did have you know, people who would tell me hey this is not a good idea everything that i've learned i've learned on my own and i've pretty much taught myself how to survive you know from getting my first job to getting my first girlfriend every single thing i've ever done i've done on my own and this is why i'm able to um to move the way that i move because i'm the one producing it but i've also always accepted um, any downfalls, any faults, or any any um, consequences that come with it, you know, if somebody doesn't want to mess with me anymore, or, you know, I accept it, but I also push people away very, very easily, you know, and why is that? I would, well, I'm not too sure. I, I think my tolerance for fake um, friends or people who say things to sound cool at the moment, but then when it comes down to that moment, they're not producing the results they say they could produce. And I, I just don't want to deal with it. You know, I am I work hard, man, and I'm willing to work a lot of hours and, and sacrifice to produce what I want. And so far, I've been successful in, you know, financially, I've been successful. And it, it kind of bothers me when I see people that I, you know, call friends not wanting to work hard to produce financial freedom. And with financial freedom comes the ability to do what you want when you want to do it. So your financial and, freedom has allowed you to be the sexual addicted person. Yeah. And it's it's kind of weird because um you know I, I have a family member I didn't know 
was in a relationship for many years. And um, when the woman asked, you know, uh, my family member, you know, it's about that time that, you know, we move in together and we become a real couple. He walked away. He said, I'm never moving into a house with any woman. And he chose to end the relationship and to, to live with her because that was the ultimatum that was given. And he chose. And I thought that was genius when I, when I found out that he did that. But what I did find weird was that they were together for so long and never said anything. You know, and I don't know if it's just the males in my family that constantly do this because it's, it's, I don't think I'm the only one showing symptoms of this, you know. I, I, I do have other family members that, uh, their relationships came to an end because that guy in my family decided to have, uh, you know, sex with, uh, you know, the, the sister, you know, and. I was like, wow, shit. Oh, you mean you mean sibling <laughs> you mean siblings, like brother and sister sex or uh they were both sisters. And you know, he took them both down. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. You know. And it's it's a weird pattern I see in my family. You know, I, I don't know if uh I don't really see I, I don't see where it comes from, you know, because it's not like my parents are like you know, had like sexual behavior in front of us, you know, they were always very quiet about everything, never, you know, never walked in on them or anything like that. You know, my mom never dressed, uh, you know, she was never a sexual dressing woman, you know, provocative. So I, I really don't know where I got it from. You said you didn't have mentors or, or an older person to speak to. So what's your relationship with your father? Um, my dad was always a worker. I think that's why what I really got from him was the hustle to work long hours and and do what you have to do. But um, you know, I, I was actually the youngest one. Uh, I think my parents had me when they were maybe early forties. Okay. So by the time I was already twenty, they're in their sixties. So they were already pretty much going down that hey we're in our careers already we're financially getting putting ourselves to, together to retire and you know they were there more for my sisters than they could be for me because you know my sisters were older than me so by the time you know and I had kids you know they were already gone and retired so I, I never, you know, I had a relationship when it came to, let's say, going to the movies or, you know, wrestling with my dad as a kid, but never really, you know, those life lessons. Because life lessons come with, when it, when it comes to your kids, it's constantly giving examples. You know, he told me how to drive and not to do drugs and stuff like that, you know, but we never had those real deep, you know, if, if me and my dad spend too much time together, we end up arguing, you know, we'll have, we'll just argue about any dumb shit. And, um, you know, my dad had a stroke not too long ago. So I end up having to, um, be more of the man around, like, you know, my parents own property. So I have to, uh, you know, something's broken. I got to fix it. You know, so I, I would go from um, property to property, just fixing things. And everywhere where they have a property, I know where the local uh, hooker spot is at. You know, so it's it's I set up things in different locations as well. So when you're gonna, when is this five rating you gave yourself to take this seriously going to go higher, or is it going to drop, or is it going to just going to be? I'm going to just fucking be this person for the rest of my life. Because obviously you're, you're functioning. You're speaking about it because it's, it's, it's hit you in some type of way. So, cause it's, it's surfacing up, it's bubbling up, but the type of action, are you, what type of action are you truly going to take at this point? 
I, I have no idea, to be honest with you, man. Um, I, I looked for different, um, like, I, I, I tried to see if there was, like, group counseling one time, and I kind of laughed it off because I was like, damn, if I go to the group counseling, you know, for people who are addicted to um to sex, I might end up going home with one of these people. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, shit, this might not work out. Um, you know, I I mostly you know watching whatever videos are available on YouTube. You know, I I found one gentleman. He was talking about how. He ruined his marriage. He lost his house, his job. He lost everything. You know, financially, he was just giving all his money away. And, you know, he was supporting sex trafficking and the abuse of women. And, you know, I, I try to take that all in. And, you know, it, it, it does slow me down. And, uh, you know, but it's. I get right back on the horse after a while. You know, and when it comes to these women, you know, I would say at times I say, okay, look, I'm just going to walk away. I'm I'm not going to make the phone call anymore. And next, you know, two months later, you know, they call me, you know, so it's, it's a back and forth thing that we've done to each other. You know, so if I disappear, they call me. If they disappear, I call them. You know, we're kind of all addicted to each other. But that's because you made them that way. Yep. And yep. that's but that was your plan, though. That you you that was a strategic plan that you had to create this world that you're in. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so. I thought about it. I didn't think about it too deep, but I kind of knew what I wanted. I didn't really know what I, I didn't, I didn't know what would be the outcome. I didn't know what would be the suffering. I didn't know uh, the longevity of how fast these 10 years, these 20 years just went by and con con uh, continuously doing the same thing, you know, and now I'm here, you know, I'm still in the same place doing the same thing. Um, I have a very addictive personality. You know, when I started smoking marijuana, I didn't just smoke. I was smoking an eighth a day for years and years and years. That it, for me, just to quit, I had to go to another country somewhere where I couldn't find marijuana. And I, I ended up taking a month long, a month long vacation just to get it out my system. You know, and it's, I realized that anything that I do, I do it with a very addictive personality. And once I do it, I want to, I want to continuously do it. You know, and, and this is that, that's why you work seven days a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much so. You know, and that's also why I, I stay away from things like cocaine. You know, I've tried it before. You know, um, I liked it for a little bit of time. But if I get caught up on something like that, it's going to be bad. You know, and that's why I got to stay away from, from drugs in general. You know, I'm not much of a drinker. You know, I'll get a couple of beers, but, you know, even that, you know, if I, if, if I get a, go down the wrong lane with alcohol, I'll find myself buying a bottle of tequila every day and just going through it and waking up and going right back to work. You, know, you just can't watch a, a, a YouTube channel to get help. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't. You you really need to to get professional help because your situation, because you have this addictive nature, and the, the sexual part of it as well that comes you know comes into play, and the and and the circle that you have created with these women, and you know you you giving them some type of hope. You know they, I'm sure that down the line they're assuming he's gonna choose me. Yeah, oh, definitely, they feel that way. You know, I, I've been with one of them for what, uh, thirteen years, and the other one for five. You know, so they've been around for a while already. 
and, and you're okay with 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 knowing that there it is in the wing waiting for you to make a decision, and you're like, I'm never gonna make a decision. I'm. I am, and I'm also not. I am because I'm very selfish, but I'm not in a sense of I'm. You know, especially for the for the younger one, I realize that I might be even taking the opportunity away from her from finding because it takes years to really find somebody you want to be with learning that person and then realizing like hey this might be the person i want to have kids with you know and i feel that i'm taking her golden years away from her you know so i can just pretty much use her as as my own personal sex slave you know what I mean? but it's not stopping you it's not stopping me at all I'm I'm actually supposed to go see her this weekend. And your other your your baby mom knows this. She knows you won't be around this weekend. Um well I try to do things in a very discreet manner. You know. But she knows. Yeah, she knows. She knows very well. So if you don't um, come back until Sunday night, she already knows that you're with the other one. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's and you come back home and on Sunday night and everything's fine. Yeah. So you have this really spoiled life that these women are allowing you to have. Yeah. And in your head, why fuck this up? I'm getting away with it. Yep. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. And, you know, I came up with this way of thinking and I, I told myself just the other day, like, wow, you know, I could, I could give you 10 years, but why should I give you my whole life? Why should I have to do so many things, work so hard and say that, damn, you know, I, you know, every 10 years I should just break up a relationship and move on to something else. You know, why should I? just be married and you know I, I find that to be so boring you know when I see like you know, how, how are you gonna have sex with the same fucking girl for 20 years bro like I find that boring I've, I've never found something interesting in marriage or or, or or being locked down to just one woman so that word locked down that's definitely a hood term right that's definitely the yeah. term we use all the time and I remember us being young and we're like, yo, you're gonna be locked down with the shorty or whatever. Like, what makes you, what makes you want to do that? Like, so, do you are you afraid of the commitment, or are you solely really, really thinking this weird way that you're missing out? Like, because what, what have you, you're you're missing out now because you're living this 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 life. Yeah, I'm living a lie. So, mm-hmm. you know, to have one woman is not far fetched. But and to have a relationship that can prosper and you can actually build together with someone and maybe build even something else with it, that's not attractive to you. It is, it is, and I think that if I do that, it has to be with everything that I want, and that's what doesn't really um, work no, out. No, it doesn't because you can't have everything that you want. Yeah. So, for example, if I was to take both of the girls that I'm dating and make that into one person, that's what I want. You know, you're I want to. You're not gonna get that. That's not know? real life. Yeah. That's a fantasy. That's that's strictly a fantasy right there. And not to say that you have to settle, but you do have to try to. One, you have to start loving yourself because. By you doing this, just shows that you're not loving yourself. That there's something missing of value to yourself. You do realize that, don't you? Yeah. That's something you really have to look at and say, you know, yeah, you're 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 macho man. You're 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 financially stable. You're providing for your for your families, right? You gotta get kill yeah. all these chicks, right? But 
since you can't commit, since you really can't love, that means somewhere along the line, you don't love yourself either because look at the addiction that you have. You're not respecting yourself nor others. Nope. And I would go above and beyond for my addiction at times. You know, leaving the house in the middle of the night, you know, from, you know, even when I was young as a kid, you know, um, you know, being in my early 20s, living in my mom's house, I would bring prostitutes home while everybody's sleeping. You know, so I've I've always put my addiction over everything. Over everything, man. And that's, that's disrespect right there. You're just disrespecting your mom's crib. And you're okay with doing that, disrespecting other people. That's what you're doing to these women. You're disrespecting them. I pretty much disrespected every crib I ever stood in. There hasn't been a, a house that I've stood in and not disrespect them. You know, I mean, you know, from my mom's house to, to every girl that I pretty much dated, you know, I've always brought other women over as well, you know. And you're okay with that? That doesn't I, fuck it, with you? It, it, it was a thrill. At the moment, it was a thrill. I was getting high off of that thrill, and I think it's 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 starting to mess with me more now as I as I'm getting older. It's it's starting to realize that that bond, that togetherness that I do see some couples have, you know. But at the same time, you know, there's a lot of sexual fantasies that I've had, such as you know having threesomes with women. Um, is one of the things that, you know, not every woman feels that way, that they're willing to be sexual with other women, you know, and... and especially not since you don't want to have, be sexual with two guys. <laughs> right? Because you're asking them, hey, yo, I want you, I want to I wanna fuck your sister, your cousin, or whoever, your best friend, but don't even think about asking you to fuck another dude. Pretty much. Pretty much, you know. So uh, that's one of the things that um, you know, if if I've always told myself, if I'm gonna be with just one woman, you know, she has to be open to, you know, instead of me going out and cheating, why can't it just be something that hey, let's go pick up a girl together and we both enjoy her, you know? But these are all just sexual fantasies that actually. They're not helping the relationship. No, they're they're, they're, they're doing not. more damage than anything. Absolutely. You know, my thing is this: hearing your story, like you know, if, if if you want to do all that, that's great, that's fine. You know, it's not great actually, but it's, it's no, it's it's totally your, your life. But to really the manipulation part of these women, the constant dragging it out, giving them hope, um, you know even having kids with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's fucked up. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you're okay with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you you're strictly okay with that. And like, you know, you just said that like, you can find someone who's willing to be just like you, a fe- a female version of you. That's what you look you you're looking for yourself in a in a female. You want the same person which is you in a female. That's who you want to fucking rock with. Yeah, I've always said that. Yeah, you're right. I've always said that. I'm looking for someone who is just like me. But I don't I think that's also my worst nightmare. Well, absolutely cuz there's no love in that. Cuz you again, like I said, you definitely don't love yourself. Cuz in order to love someone else, you have to love yourself. You got to know how to have self-care. Right? And you don't have that. You you working 7 days a week, that's another addiction. No doubt, you being a man, you bring home the bacon. But to do what? To support your fucking habit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm not preaching. I'm not I'm not a therapist. I'm just I'm just yeah. giving you feedback from what I'm hearing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and this is just real talk. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you you're doing this to these women, and 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 you're surrounding yourself with this world, and it just comes down to a point that it, what I see is that you don't love yourself. You just don't. There's no way how you can, because if you did love yourself, you wouldn't even think about doing this. You know what I'm saying? Um, and some, you know, it's not to say I've never been around it before, because I have been myself. Like, you know, 
not me personally, but like, you know, I've had family members who had two women and lived this kind of this life and they knew about each other too. So it's not foreign. It does happen. You know what I'm saying? But at the end, it doesn't work out. Yeah, it, it never does. I haven't no, seen it. Work. It doesn't. It never works out because at the end of the day, it's again, what's, what's, what's the anchor of keeping two people together? For, for you, it's just, is a sexual. For them, they want more. And no doubt you've you've sexually educated them in something they didn't have before. So yeah, maybe they do like that part of it, but I'm sure at the end of the day, when everything's done and they want to just chill with you and, and vibe with you, you're definitely not providing that. No, I'm not. They want more of that, to be honest with you. Because between the time I spend with, you know, at work, sleep, uh, you know, I'm taking care of personal biz, like, you know, being with my kids, you know, having shopping here and there. And I don't have any much, any more time. I have no more time. You know, and a woman wants to wake up by her man every day. And, you know, that's not happening if you're not there. You know, if you're running around with other women and, you know, and then on top of that, you know, me, me continuously looking for other ones as well. Yeah, because you're always on the prowl. You're always looking for the, the, the newest thing. Yep. The next the next one. Because you got the last one. It's done. Been there, done that. And to your point, like you said earlier, you found it very weird to say, why would you want to smash something for the next 20, 30, 40 years for the rest of your life? Yeah. So that that's kind of like one of my issues. Like, I don't... I don't find the long-term relationships that interesting, you know, and uh, at the same time, you know, I kind of look at my situation. I'm like, okay, I do have an addiction, but damn, at least this is not one of those addictions that you know, I'm losing weight and I look like a crackhead or something like that, you know. That's it's, what it's, that's what alcoholics say about cocaine heads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what cocaine people say about alcoholics. You know what I'm saying? That's what they say about hair. Like everybody who's addicted to something wants to justify how they're not as bad as the next addiction. Yeah. And you and you are saying that right then and there. You just you're trying to justify your shit as is as being okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. you you're, you're right. And you just, you just did that, yeah. And no, you're absolutely right. You know and. I don't know. It's like, yo, like, bro, I really enjoy myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's, a, that's, a, that's a narcissist talking right there. I'm really enjoying myself. And, you know, I, I get a kick out of it. You know, when somebody sends me a picture of a woman and she's only wearing a bathing suit and she's fucking amazing, you know, fucking model status you know and they're telling me hey 50 bucks enjoy it it's hard to turn something like that down that's extremely hard and for me to get away from this I would have to make such a change in my life you know change my email address change all my social medias, my cell phone number, pretty much every single method of contact that I have would have to be redone because I get contacted in every every way and form. And you will have to really change up your mindset. Yeah. You will have you know, to definitely switch up your lifestyle. Like this, you will have to have some type of strength, which you're lacking right now. You're lacking strength. Yeah. As, as yeah. much as you, you're trying to portray that you're strong, you have zero strength right now. Because your addiction yeah. has allowed you, your addiction has taken over your life. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely has. And um, I, I recall an incident that happened maybe a year ago now. Um, I was on, I, I was contacted on Facebook. You know, somebody hit me up very very pretty girl and you know and we just started talking having um um pretty much phone sex through 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 messenger or something one of these apps 
And, you know, she asked me to, to show her my, my penis. And I did, you know. And then they send a letter. You know, they started telling me they were going to blackmail me, send it to my um to all my family members and all my friends that I have there on social media. And I laughed. You know, I was like, hey, I probably got a hundred of those pictures out there already. You know, I don't see you having any effect. You know, and I actually told him, hey, you want to take more pictures? <laughs> you know, I don't give a fuck. And I really have this not giving a fuck attitude when it comes to it. You know, and I, you know, the person ended up, it, it got to the point that they blocked me. <laughs> you know what I mean? They blocked me. They was like, no, just forget it, just forget it. You know, and it's 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 been a a, a long venture, man. You know, and I follow the seasons. You know, I know where to find them when it's cold outside. I know where to find them when it's hot outside. On rainy days, sunny days, I've gotten this down to a T. Yeah, you and do. It's not something to be proud of, you know, and it's it's a, a it's an addiction where you don't really see the addiction and you don't really see the effects otherwise than financially. Well, so let me ask you true. this, right? So I know I asked asked you earlier about we why you came on a podcast to speak about this, but really why did you come on the podcast to talk about this? Is this you being your narcissistic self just to bring more attention say, to you? I, I I agree with that. I think yes. But I also think that when I looked up for information in reference to getting help, I really didn't find men talking about this. I didn't find men putting themselves out there and saying, hey, this is what I'm going through. This is my situation. This is how all this is affecting my life. I didn't really find guys talking about it. So it kind of was like, hey, you know, I think that one of the first steps for me to um, understand my situation is to actually have a long, drawn-out conversation, listen to what I'm saying, understand what I'm saying, and um, and maybe this might help somebody to realize they're not the only ones going through this. And, and as well as being a narcissist, you know, hey, I, I got on... on uh, the Nomad, you know, Johnny Nomad presents podcasts. This is what I'm doing, you know. And uh, I don't know if you recall that that episode of um, it's a Seinfeld, right? When Kramer changed his license plate to Buttman, <laughs> and yeah. now now you know all the women were throwing themselves at him. You know, it, it it might be something like that. Hey, he has a thousand, you know, listeners, and there might be one of them out there that might be looking for something like this. But you know, it's it's it has to do with a little bit of everything. You know, and I really don't have answer. I don't have the right answer because I don't I don't know what the solution to my problem is. I don't know if I want a solution, but. I I kind of really know I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. And I, I haven't been happy in years. No matter how much I do this or I haven't been happy because I'm living a lie and I'm hurting people. I'm not able to wake up with a clear conscience. And when you can't wake up with a clear conscience every day, it it does hurt, you know. I, I know I'm hurting my loved ones. I know I'm hurting, you know, people around me. You know, I, I have kids. I, I have a, a, a great, you know, baby moms. I have a, a good support 
when it comes to her and her family. If her and family hears this podcast, what's going to happen? I'll be surprised because they can't. They barely speak English. You so know? you you you're definitely working in the shadows all the time. Then you're very strategic in your movement. So even you being on here, knowing that hey, they're not going to fucking understand this shit. Yeah, pretty much every everything I do, but at the same time, everybody has you know they know they have. I've I've always left clues. I've always left. I've always made comments that I shouldn't make, and people realize that hey, this is you know he's not like everybody else. You want to be fu- sorted out. You want to be found out. Like you get a kick out of it. You want you want to be known. Well, that's kind of like the weird thing is that that's what I I am known for. Right. You know, I've had friends I haven't seen or talked to in years that when we do see each other, they be you know, you know. Well, I don't want to say we do see each other, but when they reached out, it was because that's what they were looking for at that moment. You're, you're they, the plug. So yeah. I, you're, you're, I was the plug. Yeah. You're the yeah. plug for that. You're the connect. Yep. And you like that? You get a kick out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You like being yeah. that that you like being that guy because you can. You can provide something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up, uh, you know, and most of, most of all my friendships, you know, all my buddies, we were all single guys. And, you know, we always had goals of, hey, if we're going to go out, we're going to go out and get some pussy. And, you know, I continued. I never knew what it was to be in a real relationship. I've always lived the life of a single man. And well, being single and doing what you're doing is only two different things now. Yeah, I, I, I think you understand that, know, right? If you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you're single, you can do this, and it, the repercussions on you know, as far as loved ones, are not as bad. But um, if you if you truly been a single man, that means that you you not with someone at that moment. And if you are smashing other chicks, then that means you're just fucking dating at that point. You know what I'm saying? And you get to smash, you smash. But a single man, the whole purpose of being single, whether a woman or a man, is not to be strategically trying to get with people, manipulating them, having a sexual addiction, and then presenting it as, "Hey, I'm this righteous person. I'm badass for it." <laughs> Okay. You know, you know, I want to tell tell how it is, bro. You know, I've always been that way. No, I need to hear it. You know, I I need more honest people in my life. And um, you know, one thing I do appreciate about the younger girl is that she's very honest with me. You know, she she knows exactly how I'm using her. She knows exactly how I'm hurting her, and she expresses that. She's very very vocal, and that's one of the things that I've always really liked about her you know she kind of really reminds me of me and it's 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 in a way i kind of do want to end the relationship with my son's mother you know and call all this quits and see if i can just you know make something blossom with the younger girl because i feel that she's just more compatible with personalities but when it comes to goals and creating something in life you know she makes comments such as you know she doesn't want a nine to five she doesn't really even want to work you know and that's not something that i find as making sense you know if you want to buy houses and you want to you know, be able to have kids and have all these things and be set. You can't just depend on a man, you know, and that's one of the things that she kind of, she kind of does, even though that she does work, she doesn't, you know, she has this idea of that she's going to marry a millionaire one day and he's just going to take care of her. And that ain't going to work, especially with my dick in her. So, 
it's 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 yeah and that that's narcissism talking <laughs> that that is straight yeah. up there's a true fucking example of it and your laugh and people when people hear this you know what i'm saying to hear your laugh it's it's straight up fucking disrespectful it's evil bro <laughs> it is evil yeah it's evil it's fucking disrespectful it's 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 not like you're showing no compassion whatsoever you're compassionless I don't. I, yes, you're right. I'm not showing compassion. I'm not showing that it's truly affecting me. Have I you think, ever had um, suicidal thoughts? Oh, hell yeah. I'm extreme. Yo, bro, I've always wanted to kill myself. So check this out. I've, I've, I, I've spoken to, to somebody in reference to our, you know my issues. I've never been suicidal as in taking the actual action of doing it but i've always wanted to kill myself because i don't enjoy life itself i've never really enjoyed life hence the thought of con you know of killing myself but i've never been the type to say hey let me go get some pills let me get a knife let me get a gun let me hang myself I never took the actual actions of taking it forward, but I find myself to be a very depressed person. And um, it, 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 most of the, my happiness comes through having sex, you know? So I kind of find that as my way out, but it's not a real way, way out. It's more of just, you know, going down the rabbit hole more and more and more. Because it's not, it's it hasn't produced anything, anything positive out of it so far. Hmm. And you still haven't seeked help for none of this shit. None of it. I've never seeked help for anything. Nothing. I don't even like going to the doctors. <laughs> for real. If I have pain, hey, suck it up. You know. So you truly are content with living this this life. I haven't paid any consequences. And what what would it, what would it take? Because if what these girls it? yeah, because these girls leave you, you're not emotionally attached. You're not gonna feel shit. I don't know what it would take. I, I have no idea. Well, I think what it would take is you catching some fucking disease, and then by then mm. it'd be too fucking late. Because once you catch that disease and, and people and you're looking for that fucking loved one to take care of your ass, that shorty's not gonna fucking be there. That might be it. Hmm. You know, and it's I don't I don't even think that will be it, to be honest with you, man, because in today's society they damn near got a pill for everything. You know, and if there's not a pill, there's a there's a, a community of people who, who carry that same virus that are all looking for each other. And so this is where you need a lot of help. This is where you need, you know, behavioral coaching and all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, but again, it comes down to if you truly want it. You're so high on yourself. I, I don't see you getting that shit. I want you to get help. I would love for you to get help. And whoever's listening to this, if you can help him, hit me up, hit him up. You know what I'm saying? That'd be fantastic. But you have to want to help. And like I said, you don't love yourself enough to want to get the help. Because all this shit is cool to you. Yeah. That's 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 a big problem. That I, I don't... I'm not accepting my faults. I'm not accepting how this is affecting not only me but everybody else. You know, I've I'm not living a normal life and nor have I ever lived a normal life. You know, I, I find it weird when I see some of my friends that they go on vacations and they're just having a good time. 
like, hey, uh, you're having a good time and you have no pussy there with you? I'm good. And that's not me. Right? See, I think, I think your perception of a normal life is, there's no such thing as a normal life. That's one, right? People do like to boast out on IG or whatever and, and, and present their best life. You know what I'm saying? But as far as a normal life with someone, that's all up, up to you two people to develop the life you want to live. And then that will be your life. But to whole, buy a house, have 2.5 kids, pick a fence, and a dog, that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So the same way you just created, you created your life in the past 20 years and this lifestyle that you've chosen, you can very well have a lifestyle you can work with someone to build like I said earlier, to build with someone that would be your ideal lifestyle to live. But it can't include the sexual addiction. Like you said earlier, we're going to find a shorter that's pretty much the female version of you. You know, so for you to say that and to dismiss someone's marriage and saying, oh, they're, they're like, they're happy, but you only fucking one pussy. <laughs> and you laugh <laughs> at that. And you, and you dismiss it like, yo, that nigga's stupid. That, that 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 says a lot about your insecurities. Okay. About what the fuck you're afraid of. Because that's. I mean, that's, and you know, and I I do find it really interesting. You know when. You know, I ask a guy, "Have you ever cheated?" And they say, "No." I'm, you know, maybe in high school or college, and you know, I have my wife now. Yeah. I, it just doesn't compute. Right? I don't know. I, it doesn't come. It doesn't. The puzzle doesn't come together. I don't see it. Like for some reason, it doesn't make sense. You know why? Because you don't have fucking love in your heart for somebody. That's why. If you truly love someone, you don't want to see that person fucking hurt. You just don't. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to see that person hurt. You don't want to see them cry. You don't want to see him go through the fucking pain. You know, you want to put a f your family through that type of torture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just don't because you fucking love that person to death. I, I, I agree with you, but I I, can't, I also don't know what you're talking about because I've I, never experienced I, it. I agree with you when you say, you know, that's love. And I don't think I've I experienced it. I don't, I've never had that feeling of, I love her. Yeah, I mean, like, really, I've said it, but I've never had that. It had no meaning behind it. Yeah. You, you know, know, I think there's amazing things that women do, you know, you know, such as, for example, you know, I think it's amazing that she gave me two boys, you know, she carried them and gave birth to them, put her life on the line. Is that going to stop me from cheating? I don't know. I, well, it hasn't. I'm not in over 10 years. And it's not because you don't love her. And that's because I don't love myself. Exactly. Wow. That's, you know, it's, it's, it, it is an eye opener. And to be honest, I, I would like to change. I would like to have that bond. It's not, as, it's not as whack or corny how you portray it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm married. Me and my wife have a very different relationship from other people because we are really synced up. We really talk a lot. We communicate a lot. We just don't say we're married to be married. We don't, we don't present a picture of us being this this couple just for for face and to be fake and then in the background we're arguing whatever like we make sure we work every day together to prosper to build with one another because we chose each other right on monday is going to be my one year anniversary with my wife which is march march 4th but we've been together for eight years you know i was up front with her in the beginning how i didn't want to get married again because this would be my second marriage but because she was such a special woman and I found how much love she has for me and I have for her, I was like, this makes sense. Now, but between my, my first divorce, yeah, I was smashing mad chicks, but I was dating. 
I wasn't committing myself to no one. So it was the, the, the hurt and the understanding was not, you know, there was understanding, yo, we're not together. You know, we're, we're there's some drinks, whatever, we're dating. I'm going to see you next week, too, and do this again. That's it. There's no commitment. There's no promises. But when it came to my to, to my wife, even when we, were, when we got serious, even when I, I saw something strong about her, I cut all that out. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to fuck this up. To have someone to hold you down, especially a woman, you know, every great leader that's been around on this fucking planet always had a bad-ass, strong-ass fucking woman behind them. Every great fucking king was great because of the fucking woman they had by their side. Yeah, that's uh, I've seen that a lot. So yeah. until you until you understand how how it is to have a true queen next to you, and you start respecting that shit, understanding how you need to respect yourself, and how you're a king with no kingdom, that's when you're gonna fucking really feel what it is like to have someone. But right now you are totally a fucking king walking around, lost in no fucking kingdom. See. I know you're right, but I can't accept it, and that's that's the weird part. Because you don't want to. It's not weird. You don't just don't want to accept it. You do enjoy your lifestyle. Like it, like yeah. And in a way of me accepting that is also a way of me saying, "Hey, I'm wrong," and I don't like to admit that I'm wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's another problem you have. Because if you really want to prosper, you really want to say you really want to be a man, there's a lot of fixing you need to fucking do. There's a lot of stuff you have to admit to and take responsibility for. There's going to be a lot of apologizing you may have to fucking do. All right? And, and that's something you have to I've apologized. I've, I've, I've apologized before, and I continue going down the same road. And then that's not a true apology then, because it makes no sense to keep on saying I'm sorry and keep on doing the same shit and apologize again. When you apologize to someone, that means you're not going to do it again. You can't think that apology is going to go ahead and continue to glaze over your actions. I think I'm fucked. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, bro. I think I'm fucked because... Oh man, I'm, yeah, bro, I'm, a, I'm like a ghetto Hugh Hefner. Like this is difficult, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you need to really take some inventory of yourself. Really take inventory of the past twenty years and really audit yourself, and and really look at the people you've been affecting and destroying lives on the real and also look at your life for you to even have suicidal thoughts that's a huge thing yeah right you know because i I know i'm ruined lives you know i know i've completely changed lives because of my actions yes yeah it's 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 a very selfish narcissistic life that you're living and you know, if that's if you're okay with it, now like I said, that's on you. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you're gonna have to figure out what you're gonna do because your boys are gonna find out, your children are gonna find out because their mother gonna be honest with them too one day. Yeah. And she is gonna tell them the truth, and they are gonna look at you and say, "Oh, damn, that's what the fuck he was doing." Wow, I yeah, didn't know quick, my father was like that. Is- when it comes to help, to me, it comes as, it kind of seems like the only real help out there and solution is to make a choice. Oh, yeah. It's to leave that shit alone, to really get help to control your urge that you have and to put it someplace else so you can really prosper more. You're not prospering, bro. You're just existing. Is that bad? Absolutely. Just to exist. You know, you you go in every day with just waiting for the next text to to fuck the next the next chick to pay for it at that. And of course, you have your other little shorties that you you, you slide it into, but that's not living. You're not enjoying life. You go on vacation so you can find other hoes. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's just crazy, bro. It is beyond nuts. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man. Like, you look look at your actions. Really take inventory, take audit of what you're doing, and and understand that there's a huge problem here. That you go on a vacation on your own, not to enjoy the place you're going to, but just to go fuck. Yeah, and I've done that several times. You're not you're not experiencing anything. You know what I'm saying? But the nightlife. That's it. <laughs> And you know, it, it's kind of weird because in in my eyes, I find that to be somewhat as a success, especially yeah. coming from where I came from, where I come from, where, to be honest, if you come back to the old neighborhood, you're going to see most of the people in the same exact spot you left them in. That's why I don't go back to the old fucking neighborhood. Yeah, and it's it's difficult to, to see that. And then when I look at my situation, I'm like, okay. You know, I'm doing way better than most of these people. There's always someone that you're going to be doing better than, and there's always someone that's going to be doing better than you. Mm-hmm. Which, which you're saying is, is, is really nothing. Yeah, it's irrelevant. You know, it really is. You know, you, you, anyone can deem anything as successful, if, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? And if you think in monetary, you get out to projects, that's great, no doubt about it. You survived. We've all did that. You know, a whole little click survived. We came out, you know, we 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 are prospering, you know what I'm saying. But if you're gonna really put yourself on a high horse and then look down at others, saying, "Yo, I, I'm I'm here, and I'm doing me," that's not the right move either, because that also shows how you don't love yourself even more. Like no doubt, I don't go back to 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 where I grew up at because I'm 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 beyond that that, that space. Like, yeah. To go back brings back memories of like this hardship. I know where I came from. I don't need to go back to see the visualness of it that it hasn't hasn't changed. The people have to change there. The few people that have that come out of there is because they got tired of it and they found a way out. The people who have not come out of that situation, it could be many fucking reasons why. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It could be lack of opportunity, lack lack of network, just lack of education. And some people find it, some people don't. But I'm never gonna go ahead and look down and say, yo. I'm better than. Because you, that, that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? You know, what, what you have right now is something... Because you're, you're not stupid. We all know that. You're mad smart, bro. You know what I'm saying? And for you to come out now to talk about this, you, know, you have a great potential to make this something bigger to where you can actually help other people. But if you're going to be narcissistic about this shit, if you're going to find it to be all kicks and giggles and shit, then keep on living your life. If this is your best life, go at it a thousand percent then. Do you. But at the same fucking time, let these women go. Do you by doing you, but don't don't drag nobody else fucking with you. Don't be a fucking anchor of a fucking ship that's sinking and you just got these chicks left with you as well. Let them live their fucking best lives because they're not living their best lives. You know, it's it's, it's difficult because at the same time, I, I've made that um that offer. And nobody wants that offer. They, everybody wants me to change. And this is where you have to be a, a real man and fucking just walk the fuck away. If you if you know you can't commit to not one of these women, and you know you're going to continue your actions, you ask them because you know their answer already, bro. You're not fucking stupid. You know what the fuck they're going to tell you. They're still going to stick around. Of course they want you to, for, for Dolo. They want you for, for themselves. But they're also not going to let you go. And you know this. The only way this actually stops is, is all from stems from you. You started this shit, bro. You have to end it yourself. That means you having to walk away from them and saying, yo, I found love in me that now I can say that I love you enough. I got to let you go. But since you don't fucking love yourself, you're not letting these chicks go. They're your fucking toys, bro. Pretty much. Pretty much. It's been something I've been, um, I mean, I've been carrying this for a long time. And it really, even though I've, I've had what I consider fun, it really isn't. 
it really ain't worth it. And hopefully people learn from this, you know, because going down this road, is it's, it's a road that can take your life. It can ruin your life. It can destroy you financially and close a lot of doors for you. Absolutely, it can. I really do hope you find hope. I really do hope you figure the things out. I really hope that you that these women really live, like I said, their best lives without you. And because you need to really understand what it is to really live and enjoy life. And it doesn't mean you have to be with someone. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you have to be locked down marriage, like you say, right? Mm-hmm. But you do need to find a way how to live your life and not just exist through it. And to for the truly find help for your addiction, you know, and you also your depression. <clears throat> yeah, because all, all this is really not adding up. It's it's not adding up to anything positive. No, it hasn't for years. Your your actions have not given you any different result. No, not at all. Well, I, I have a few extra dollars, and otherwise than that, I'm in the same boat I've been in for at least six, seven years now. Yeah. So that's, that's something that has to happen. You know what I'm saying? That's something you need to realize as a man, as a fucking adult. Hey, I need to switch up. Again, it's, it all comes to you, bro. It all this, it's, the decision is all yours. Ooh. So, Wow. This is going to be out there, man. This is going to be out there, bro. So you need to just be ready for it. Again, I'm going to be promoting it. So um, it's totally up to you if you want to promote it. I never ask any of my guests to promote anything. Um, but um, it is out there. And it will be out there forever. And one day your boys will probably hear this. I think, um, yeah. I, I I would, I would promote it. Why not? You know, it's it's being honest. It's it's being, you know, who I am. You know, I I hope nobody hits me up. You know, saying yo, I need to plug. <laughs> That's gonna be crazy. But there's always that chance, and um, there's always that chance that maybe someone that can maybe help you can can connect you. Yeah, man. You know. But I, I need to find myself, man, to be honest. I, I need to find in happiness and, and thrills and other things because this ain't always the way to go. This is, this is leaving me down a, ro- uh, uh, a rabbit hole. Yeah, and it's something, you know, all this stuff stems from something. You know what I'm saying? So something has happened to you that uh, put you in the situation. Is, uh... I've always asked myself that, you know, is this a, a result of something else? You know, am I, am I, am I suffering? Am I, and to be honest, I don't, I, I really have no answers to that. I I think I lived a pretty decent life. And this is where a therapist will come into play and help you discover those answers. Because therapy is not about giving you the answer. Therapy is about that person's going to help you discover the answers that you already have and you just don't know it. Mm-hmm. And in our culture, therapists are, are frowned upon, right? Because yeah. you, you're crazy, right? If you go there. But nah, bro. Like, you can't assume that that person's going to help you. Their whole job is to help you help you. You know, I, I hear that a lot. And... I, I've always had this feeling that the advice that I'm going to be given is always something I don't want to hear. But it's not advice. That's the thing. They're not giving you no advice. Their job is not to give you advice. You're going to be talking to, you're going to be talking and you're going to be giving yourself enlightenment and insight about what the fuck is really going on. They're going to assist you go to go deeper and to bring shit out that maybe you've been hiding, blocked, or whatever. You know, they may suggest something, but they're not going to give you advice and shit. That's not their job. 
and I've tried a lot of things like you know I've jogging you know yoga uh, a lot of exercising changing the way I eat you know stopping you know hanging out in different locations and but they haven't worked a lot of things have you know nothing that I've tried so far has worked right so now it's time to try to get professional help and I hope you do I can't I can't I hope, I hope I, I, I'll, I'll definitely give it a try you know I, I'll definitely give it a try you know if you if, if you get help either way I want to I want to circle back to you and do a follow-up you know what I'm saying yeah. in, in a few months so you know we can definitely follow up have you come back on and you can really let us know if you continued your ways or if you have gotten help if any of your listeners have um you know been down this road and they've gotten help for anything and they can reach out you know it will be greatly appreciated you know what are some of the things that they did to um overcome their addictions yes um uh, ito is in the new york area you know he's so if um if my listeners you guys if if you know someone or know of a therapist or someone that can help in a situation you know groups you know things like that um leave it in my comments leave it in the comments you know in the, in the promotion on ig um or even in in the itunes you could leave in the comments in itunes things like that as well and i'll definitely get that to ito you know asap you know what i'm saying um yeah you know this is this has been i want to say one thank you though for being open and uh about this about this this addiction that you have and i i I will say that that does take a lot to come on and really speak candidly like you have you know you've really been very candid and descriptive of of your life so that you know thank you for that um you're my boy you know what i'm saying any way i can help you you know you let me know you know what I'm definitely saying? man i'll definitely do this again and you know hopefully we'll have all better results than the second time around we'll see we'll see bro so um guys this is giant nomad presents and today we presented addiction <laughs>